We come from all walks of life. The Spirit of God has been poured out without measure upon people that's going through a literal area needing a breakthrough, a miracle for their lives. You may be suffering with depression. You may be suffering with bills. You may be suffering with literally going through a divorce. I'm trusting that you would be ever so blessed by the living God. And I'm supposed to put the first song as the letter. But everything that we're doing this morning is prophetically inclined. There's an anointing that pastor has passed down to us that we're going to release to you all today. I said we're going to release it to you all today. Father God, right now as we begin to go into your word, God, we're asking that your anointing that destroys every yoke and undo every heavy burden. Let it set the captives free, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, take us down to the deep treasures of your word, Lord God. And God, let us, let no flesh be revealed, but let us speak as an oracle of Christ. And God, we ask you to move by your spirit, we pray now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that miracles, signs, and wonders will happen on today. We thank you that the devil and his demons will be rebuked on today. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for it right now. Open the minds, open the hearts and the ears of your people, God. Let them receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of First Corinthians, I want you to go there. I'm going to open this up. And we're asking the moment. In the book of First Corinthians, chapter 12. I want you to stand when you get it. We'll be starting first at verse 1 all the way to verse 11. When you have it, I want you to say amen. Amen. But the word of the Lord declares, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye you know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man is speaking by the Spirit of God called that Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities, varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man that profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to, the, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kind of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man separately as he will. Let every heart say amen. amen. You may be seated. We're going to talk briefly about spiritual gifts. I want you to, I want to first start off by letting you know that God has gifted each and every one of you. There is an impartation that the Spirit of God has imparted into you. The thing about gifts, when God gives you a gift, there is no reason for you to get jealous of somebody else's gift. Because the Bible declares that God gives severally, that means he chooses to whom he want to put whatever gift he wants to into. Somebody say amen. amen. So I can't be jealous of Minister Terrence because he has the gift of prophecy and I have the gift of healing. God chose me for the gift of healing and he chose him for the gift of prophecy. So what does that tell me? I need to operate in my own way. I would like to emphatically 
let you know that there's some people in here that's trying to operate on other folks' gifts. And the Holy Ghost sent me to here to tell you to stay in your own lane and operate in what the calling that God has called you to operate in. I don't want your gift because God has anointed me. God has anointed each and every one of us. The question is, how bad do you want God to reveal himself in you? Y'all are hearing this morning. The question is, how bad will I give of myself so that God can impart his spirit to me? Because the Bible says, no, you not that this temple is a temple of the Holy Ghost, and it is, you're bought with a price. One of the things that you have to understand, saints of God, is that it is a big price to pay for the gift or the anointing that you carry. Maybe I need to explain it like this. If I have the gift of discernment or the gift of wisdom, there's a price to pay when there's an anointing that follows me. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. yes. If I got a gift of prophecy, there's a price that I have to pay. So guess what that tells me? Everybody ain't called to prophesy. Everybody ain't called to have the gift of wisdom. It, come on, everybody ain't got the gift of healing. Some folks just got the gift to shut up and be quiet and pray. I threw that in as a joke, y'all get it. But each, every one of us have gifts. And people, people, the first thing people think, prophecy, oh my God. Oh, I see Pastor Larry, I see Pastor Candy, and I see various ones prophesy. Ooh, Jesus, I, I want to I be like them. No, you don't. Right, Elijah told Elijah, can I have your anointing? He said, I, I think, I'm paraphrasing. He said to him, I think you better rephrase what you're saying because you don't know what I want. Because you don't know the hell that I had to go through to get where I need to die now. People see me up here preaching. I'm 23 years old and the God has anointed me and I know he has. Folks tell me, I wish, you, I, wish I had what you had. No, you don't. Because there comes a time when you feel all alone and when you're crying and, and there's a time when demons, see, because demons are going to attack you because every, to every level there is a new day. I said to every level, you're going to have to encounter some type of demonic warfare. Because, see, the devil is not going to allow you to operate in the call of God. Why? Because he used to be in the place that you're operating in. So why would the devil, why would the enemy let you go scot-free? Oh, I'm going to let you work the gift of healing, and I'm not going to tap your own physical body and make you sick? Come on now. If he give you the gift of healing, guess what? He's going to make you sick first. I know, I know I'm talking. This is the Holy Ghost. I know it ain't me. Yeah, I know it ain't me. And I, I, want him to, I want him to talk. Do what you want to do. See, what we got to understand is when you are called, there's a price that you got to pay. The, the songwriter said, the old folks you say like this, come of all the cost that it takes to walk with Jesus. Come of all the cost with courage, bless you, press your claim. Make up your mind to suffer because it's going to be some suffering day. I said it's going to be some suffering day. That's right, that's right, yes. Yes, yes. Ask, ask every prophet, yes. do they have good nights of sleep? Yes, Jesus. Do you want to be a prophet then? Because some of y'all get to sleep. Because <laughs> yes, see, God's going to tap on you That's at certain right. hours of the morning. That's right. You're going to have dreams, you're going to have visions. Yes, yes. When you talk about the, the word of wisdom, now you have to be careful how you do with, when you're working in wisdom. Because you don't want wisdom to turn. Because see, sometimes, you gotta ask God to give you godly wisdom. Because not all wisdom is good wisdom. I said not all good wisdom is good wisdom. I said not all good wisdom is good wisdom. The thing I want you to understand is that every gift is worked by the same spirit. Never get it twisted that your gift is better than somebody else. We have, you know, at our talking university, 
the saints of God has forgotten about why we really come to church. God did not anoint you to promote yourself or to promote yourself. God anointed you for somebody else. Your anointing is not really for you. If I may emphatically say that again, your anointing is not for you. Your anointing is for the sister that's sitting next to you that's going through. She didn't lost her house. She didn't lost her husband. She didn't lost her, her mother. She didn't lost her father. She didn't lost her house. And she need a move from God. And you're the person that God has anointed to help her. Last time I want to talk about this. Write this down, because we ain't going to read it. But Matthew chapter 25, verse 20 and 26, it deals with the men. There was three men that had talents. One, God gave one, two, one, no, God gave one, one talent. Another man, two, another man, five. Well, the man with two talents, he went and increased his, he doubled his. The man with five talents went and doubled his. But the man with the one talent, see, and this is what I can I can't get about church for. You cry because you you ain't you ain't got an anointing to preach. Well, everybody ain't called to preach. Everybody ain't called to cast demons out. Listen, if you call the clean toilet, that's a gift. Clean them toilets in with their anointing. And y'all didn't like that right there. <laughs> See, there's a gift of servitude that God has given to us. Everybody ain't called to sing on the praise team. You may have some kind of singing voice, but you ain't called to sing. You ain't called to worship. He Hello, somebody. You have to operate. If God told you to vacuum the sanctuary, that's your gift. I would get that vacuum, pray over it, anoint that vacuum with all and say, only those do the talk. And while you're running that vacuum down the aisles, I speak while the vacuum, I speak in tongues while the vacuum. I say, God, get every line and get every crease in order. Make the sanctuary look so holy that when folks come in, that the anointing be so strong for me vacuuming that they can't even stand it when y'all ain't saying nothing. See, I know everybody want to preach. You want to hop on one foot. No, 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 no. You ain't been told to preach. Count up the talks. So he gave him one talent. And the man with one talent, what did he do? He went and hid What I want to say, there's some of you that's sitting here today, God has given you a gift. And you're sitting on your gift. God told me to tell you this morning, it is time to rise up and utilize what God has put in you. You may not have a degree, but you have a gift. And when that gift comes, the anointing. And the box said the anointing, it destroys the young. Y'all ain't saying that. And I'm used to heavy burden. Did you know? Did you know that Moses had a speech problem? Yes. Yes. Moses had a stuttering stu 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 problem. Moses said, listen, God, you want me to tell Pharaoh what? This is a rich ruler. You want me to, my dialogue ain't even good. God said, I want you to just give him, tell him this. Tell him that I am, that I am sent you. But my speech ain't good. See, you ain't got to worry about what you ain't got. Quit looking at others and how good they operate. God has given you an anointing and a call, and he wants you to operate the way he has called you to operate. And guess what? You ain't got to speak like Pastor Candy or Pastor Larry speak. Speak like God called you to speak. Sing like God called you to sing. Pray like God called you to pray. Don't hide your talent. Don't hide the gift. Because guess what? That man that buried him, his master told him, he said, it's going to be a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth. You're going to suffer because you don't use it. You better utilize. Body of Christ, I know you're waiting on the pastor. You're waiting on the pastor and the elders to do the work. But guess what? God's called you. I said God's called you. And he's put something inside of you that you need to utilize. Somebody say, work the gift. 
Come on, somebody say, work again. Work again. At this time, let us receive Pastor Kelly with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm going to read what he read out of the Amplified. All right. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to say this. Uh, God is really using a young pastor. Young pastor. He was like a piece of the puzzle that was missing. But y'all see how he you see how the service is going. It was the time that the pastor went out of town, and this would happen. You feel confident in leaving out of town. Well, one of the reasons is because God has anointed you. And I pray God as we go on. See, I'm, I'm, I'm older than Pastor. Pastor has to have a presence. He has to. He can't continue on. You know, we're getting older. And I pray. God anoint him to be the next pastor. I'm saying that prophetically. I'm saying that prophetically. And I knew it even when I met him. First time I met him, I knew it. And Ashley had always had an anointing of her life. Even when she was in mind, she was in mind. I'm telling you, he would do an extraordinary. I would always be amazed. Every time you were mine, I was amazed at what you did. Because I knew a lot of it that you were doing was what you experienced. I know a little bit about you. You know what I do. I know where you came from. I know your dad. I know your grandma. I know your family. I know, your family. I know you know, and there's nothing that you need to be embarrassed about in your life because David was rejected. They called David. And David was the man that Samuel was looking for. Yes, yes. Wow. But Jesse didn't go get David. He brought the other seven out. And he said, you must have someone else. That's right. And David came and Saul anointed him. And guess what David did after he got anointed? Yes, yes. Huh? He went back into the field and started attending the sheep That's right. for six years. But guess what happened in that six years of preparation? Them sheep taught him how to fight a giant. Because if he hadn't been attending them sheep, he never would have ran into a lion. And if he hadn't been attending them sheep, he never would have ran into a bear. I've seen, I've seen bears run into uh, mooses and animals, and I don't care how big the lion was. He would never been able to have no bath, no, no life. Yes, yes. So therefore, David knew of what his ability was. And it wasn't because that he was all of that. It was because of the anointing of God that was on him that gave him that ability yes. to wrestle with them beasts and overcome them. Yes, so he knew who he was. He knew that he had the anointing of God for him. And like he was saying earlier, all of our gifts are different. Amen. So therefore, I'm, a, I'm going to read out of the Amplified the same thing that he read, but it says like this. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special anoint, a special endorsement of supernatural energy. Brother, I would not want you to be misinformed. You know that when you were heathens, and that's what you are when you ain't saved, and that's what they are, those are the people that ain't saved. You know what that, they're heathens. That's right. If you ain't saved, you're heathen. The Bible just said it here. Right. Now when, he said, now when you were heathen, now before you got saved, you were a heathen, you were led off after idols that could not speak. Habakkuk <laughs> and impulse to directed in whatever the occasion may arise. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speak under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit of God can say, Jesus be a curse. And no one can really say, Jesus is my Lord, except by the, under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow, wow. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endorsements, gifts, extraordinary powers distinguishes certain Christians due to the power of the divine grace operating in their soul by the Holy Spirit and varieties 
and by the Holy Spirit remaining the same. And there are different diversities of service and administration, but it is the same Lord who serves. And there are distinctive varieties of operations of working, accomplishing things, but it is the same God who inspires and energizes them all. But to each is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Holy Spirit for good and for profit. I remember when the pastor went off to a prophet's convention. He came back and he last to those who were here Friday, raise your hand. Friday night, I did something called the Nava Flow. When pastor went to this prophet's convention, he came back and he, and he demonstrated how to work under the, the Nava Flow. And that's pretty much what I work under. But there's certain times I may want you to have a house real bad. And without praying, I can begin to tell you, you want to get a house like this, or you want to get a house like that, because it's what I desire, and you don't get it. I've given you the wrong word. Yeah. But every time, and I do that sometimes, I've given people the wrong word, because I desire for them to have certain things out of my desire. But when I don't, Pastor had taught us by going up under the Navajo flow. But every time I go and I pray in tongues, it happened. It'd be after 100%. And we did it. When Pastor came from out of town, I don't know if you go over here. When Pastor came from out of town, he told everybody to prophesy, speak in tongues, and then prophesy to the one next to you. I don't know if those, and that happened. And as they began to, everybody that prophesied, every prophetic word was after. Everyone. It happened Friday night. And we did the same thing. And I asked people who had who was given the word. And everybody that had received the word, it was accurate. So nobody, so the gifts of God, the, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And it says here, to another is given the spirit of the power of speaking a message of wisdom. Another the power to express a word of knowledge and understand according to the, by the same spirit. Now, the, the working of, of, of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, they correlate one another. Sometimes a person can have the word of, 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 of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Because what happens is like, uh, uh, just say that Nisi is a nurse. And there's an extraordinary, and, and see, Nisi has this, because she has the intellectual understanding, has been to a university and know uh, extraordinary, she knows things about nursing. But in that, but in her ability to do nursing, God will give her the ability to do abundant and exceedingly abundant above what she thinks of ask. But see, that's adding to her intellect. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and I, was, I was a reader of comic books when I grew up. And you had two kinds. You had mom. And you had, uh, uh, what's the one Superman in? Uh, anybody know? DC. DC. And in Marvel, you had the Avengers. That's right. And, 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 and in DC, you had, uh, what was the name of that group of people? <laughs> the, you know, the, the, all the superheroes. The Justice League. That's it. That's it, y'all follow <laughs> But one thing about it, they were united. Even Superman had help. Even Superman had help. So therefore, and, and therefore, as we begin to stand up here and, and we begin to, to, to show how God is, you know, I, I, my, my gift is not like Pastor Tate's. His, I, my gift is not even like his young brother's here. My gift is not like Pastor Larry. He's going to demonstrate his gift in a minute. But I thank God because God has chosen us. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to put this thing in order. Because the Bible speaks about until we put it together. To, to pray and put it to the perfect man. He said, until we come to the unity of the faith. And that's what we headed for in this church. We say, well, how long, how long this church has been in existence for a long time? But a lot of things have not happened. You know, all of the ability. See, Pastor been Superman for a long time. But God is calling, calling him to have a justice lead. Y'all hear me? Pastor's yeah. been the hope for a long time. But God is calling him to have some adventures. Y'all hear me? That's what it means. That's what it means. But everybody got the function up under their own power. You can, and you can't be, you know, just because.
because I can stretch. You know, and the Hulk is big and, and, and strong. You know, that's the ability. And they, in the, in the world, know how to do things unitedly. We're the ones that have problems. Yeah. And God was getting him ready for an onslaught of a giant. And he stood before that giant. And he told that giant, said, you done violated. And he said, and he said you, you, you come to me with the sword and the spear. And he said, I come to you with the name of the Lord. And he took that. And the first and, 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 and the giant was so intimidated. The first thing he took off was his helmet. He should have kept that stuff home. <laughs> It might have, it might have, you know, not allowed the stone to penetrate his head, but anyway, it he was going to get slain because it was God's will. And that young boy took that rock and put it in a rack and swung that thing around and hit that big giant upside his head. And he fell flat on his back. And he took the giant sword and cut off his head. And all of Israel, they was amazed. They was amazed at what had happened. But it was supposed to happen. That one, he, David's first son was supposed to have uh, uh, Jesse's first son was supposed to have did that. Saul was supposed to have did that. But they didn't. Why? Because God had anointed David. There's a lot of you out here, like you were saying. We got to step up, y'all. <coughs> Each and every one of y'all got to give up. You got to ask God. I mean, and, and a lot of times, you know why you won't use it? Because you don't want it. You don't like it. Oh, I don't want to be no teacher. <laughs> well, I got to teach the nursery. <laughs> I don't want to be no, you know, whatever. You know, some of y'all can come in here and make this church shine. Put it so people be blinded. I don't want to do that. I want to preach like Pastor Mike. But I, you know, I, and I love Pastor Michael because Pastor Michael, I, you know, I love him because, you know, he told, you know, he said he's not going to allow us, because we all got different styles. And, and if you ever go into his class, Pastor Mike, I mean, he's still on the same level and he's anointed. And I just love the way he speaks and teach. It's different because each one of us got different styles. Each one of us. But you know what? It's the Holy Ghost that you yes. Yes. It's the Holy Ghost. And right now, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Larry. And God is going to use him the way that he always does. And Pastor Larry, I just want to say this to you. Well, Nisi worked with you. She knows that even professional people acknowledge who he is. He's a true prophet, a true man of God. Even though the church folks may not may not recognize and know who you are, God knows who you are. And the church folks go find out today. He said, 
I would tell you about her life since she was born up until now. And he told me, and I just, I just cried. I said, how do you know everything? He said, you never knew I'm a prophet. I'm a man of God. He said, but I'm going to tell you this. God has anointed you to be that prophet also. Amen. You're going to do what I do. When you speak, it's going to come to pass. Because Almighty God got his hands on you every step of the way. He said, now, you're going to be blind and paralyzed coming up at a young age. But all you got to do is say the 23rd song, and the third time, God's going to break the power of the devil off of your body. In the name of Jesus. My grandfather was right. At the age of around about oh, 16 years old, I was on my cousin's house. I couldn't get up. I fell out of bed of how I said, Cousin, cousin DJ, help, help. He said, What's wrong? I said, I'm paralyzed. I can't walk. So he said, oh, Well, just stay here. Maybe everything will be all right. Next day, two days, same way. I couldn't walk at all. I thought about what my grandfather said the third day. He came to my members. He said, What did I tell you? This was going to come up on you. Mary, you're going to be paralyzed. I said, yes. I said, well, what do, you, what do you supposed to do? I started saying the 23rd songs. I told my cousin, just leave your room. The third time, I, the Lord said, open up your eyes. I want you to see this for your own eyes. It was a mist coming through the window. I said, Lord, oh, what is that? He says, the healing spirit of Christ Jesus. Let the spirit of anointing just saturate all the way inside of your body through and through. Through every part of your whole being inside. And you will walk. I said, okay. <coughs> Minutes later, he said, now, get up. I'm hesitant. I put one feet on the ground. I said, why? Put the other feet on the ground. And I start walking. I start praying to the Lord and thanking Him. And thanking him. I said, what? That was the first time. I mean, first time. The grandfather said, as far as I'm blind. I was going to Scarborough College. That's Uncle Brown's sober program. Where they picked the best students in the college back East Coast. And, and the federal government paid for everything. So, it was about six months later, I woke up, I was blind. I couldn't see nothing at all. I said, what was going on? Still, I'm hard and I'm thinking about what my grandfather said years ago. Second day, third day came. The Lord said, my son, why are you still in this state of mind right now? What did your grandfather say to do?
to another, the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is enables them to speak edification to build someone up, exhortation to encourage somebody, comfort to console someone through distress or grief by giving them strength. God is a personal God that desires fellowship with us. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 16. Listen to every word. You can jot down the scripture and read it later on. It's powerful. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 16. I'm going to read it now. But that is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered to the heart of man the things which God have prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are really given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spirituals. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Pastor, when he spoke to me this morning, he said, my son, I need you to, to tell the people about listening and hearing the voice of God. Listen and hear the voice of God. God is speaking to us all the time, day and night. But it's sin that deafened our spiritual ears. Sin has made us so dull of hearing that we may go through our whole life without recognizing the voice of God. Don't let that happen. God is speaking, but they are totally unaware of his voice that is calling to them. God will communicate with men and women who desire his fellowship. Those who seek to walk and talk with him. God has created mankind for the purpose of having someone like himself. And he can walk, talk, and enjoy fellowship with you. Prayer and meditation will keep the lines of communication open and our ears tuned to God. Hear the Lord's instructions. God communicates with man through his spirit. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God will speak to each individual, but he will only speak to them concerning certain matters. God is not a gossiper or tale-bearer. Therefore, we normally would not speak to someone about a personal, intimate matter of a believer of God except for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now we go into personal prophecies that gives edification, exhortation, comfort, direction, instruction, correction, motivation, and impartation. Then we have divine healing and personal prophecy. That's when God supernatural heals and delivers them through, number one, prayer of faith by the elders of the church. You hear that elders? Prayer of faith by the elders of the church. Two, individual direct faith in God. The gifts of healing working through a church member or a minister. Believing the preaching of the word of faith. And number five, the prophetic word of a prophet was bringing deliverance, healing, and creative miracles to pass. 
Then we have personal prophecies concerning ministry, your gifts, and your callings. God uses various means to call men and women and children into ministry. He uses it by dreams, vision, supernatural manifestations, the voice of God, angelic visitation, Holy Spirit witness, personal invitation by Jesus, ministries of the prophet and presbyterian. Then we have, there are five channels of prophecies. Number one, the spirit of prophecies and song of the Lord. It is anointed, arising from Christ within the believer, which takes places on occasion of special anointings. Two, the gift of prophecies is a gift by faith and grace. Gifts are given to everyone. Then you have number three, the prophetic Presbyterian. That's a prophetic Presbyterian is a gathering of qualified ministers for the purpose of prophetic revelation and confirmation of those called to leadership ministry in the church. And also we have the ordination into the fivefold ministry and confirmation and activation of the saints. Then we have number four, prophetic preaching. That's prophecy gives a realm from the logos. Then number five is the office of the prophet to provide directions, corrections, pronounce divine increase of judgment or blessings, move in revelational knowledge, and lay a foundation in the church, impart spiritual gifts and anoint ministers. Praise the Lord. Now, last night, the Lord said, my son, this is what I want you to do. Tonight, for your sleep, take your anointing oil. I want you to swallow that much of it. And pray that God will sanctify you inside out. And when you wake up, do the same thing. Now, in my sleep, first person I seen, Mother Sweet. Mother Sweet, I was looking at you last night. You was just like you looking, just like that. I said, Lord, you got to say Mother Sweet today. Because I have to give her what you want me to tell her. God is very pleased with you, Mother Sweet. We go through the winter times. You didn't want to fall down and hurt yourself. But it was a struggle for you because God was with you all the time. Your daughter is going through, the Lord said. Her health, I need you to pray for your daughter's health. Is that correct? I pray the prayer of faith that God will heal your daughter. Yes, and that's what God has done already in the name of Jesus. Mother Sweet, you've been having pains in your body. You haven't told nobody. Is that true? Is that true, Mother Sweet? You've been having pains in your body, little pains. The Lord told me to pray over your body. That God's divine healing will move through your bones and your marrow and your body, through your whole entire bloodstream. And that the Holy Ghost Spirit of God will come you and fill your whole body up with the power of his anointing in the name of Jesus Christ, the whole God. And yes, that financial blessing is coming your way. And know that he's with you every step of the way. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mother Sweet. The second person the Lord showed me, and I'm glad you're here, Sister Helen, God showed me you. You were sitting up. You're a powerful woman of God. You pray and intercede for your grandkids. Covenant every single day. When 
when you have to correct them time in and time out. You don't want to do it, but you have to do it. You are a woman of God and highly favored by God. Now, sometimes it, it, it was a point where your finances were lacking a little bit. Is that correct? It is correct. Okay. God told me to pray for the finances over your body. He anoints your hands and your mind and bring forth the finances that you need to pay all of your bills and have extra also. You always give it to your kids. You sacrifice everything. You give your laughs and you won't have nothing at all in your own pockets at all. God see your heart. He see your heart. And he said, LNG, I'm going to suffer with you. I'm going to be your provider like I told you. So receive everything that God has for you is for you. Thank you, Helen G. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. It was a young lady. Yeah. Oh, here she go. Could you, could you just raise your hand? You, yes, you young lady. Could you raise your hand? Thank you. Did y'all see her? Okay. Raise your hand, I'm sorry. Nicole. Na Nicole, I was looking at you. God was speaking to me about you. You're going through hard times. You're going through a struggle, a hard struggle in your life. But God is comforting to your heart. Don't worry about nothing. God got you. Okay? I know you forgave those who hurt you. Don't harbor that inside of you. Family members, oh wow. They hurt you, man. Continue to pray for them. God sees your heart. He sees your spirit and your soul. Sister Nicole, this is your day for your breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you said you're going to bless the call this day. And we know you never show your rule, oh God. When you speak it, we know it's going to come to pass because you got it. You speak it. Oh Lord, send it off that anointing right now upon the call right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, merciful God, heal the wounds in our heart, Lord God. Heal the wounds deep in our heart, Lord God. Uproot it right now, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, merciful God. Now let us set free inside, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, merciful God. Now we pray that the Spirit of God will upon our mindset right now. Lord, send forth the anointing upon our mind. Clear everything else all of our mind. Out of our heart, Lord God, right now, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mr. Lord God. And finance and prosperity, she's been asking you, Lord God. Is that correct? Is that correct, Lord? God heard you. Yes. Lord, supply the needs of the you risk for by Christ Jesus. Send forth a financial anointing. Upon the cold, Lord oh God. And she had no need of nothing at all, Lord oh God. And Lord, we want you also to get her in the classes and the calling that you already have on her life so she can go forward in Jesus' name. Nicole, one other question. What did you tell God you want to do for him? What did you say, Nicole? Be a better daughter. Be a better mother. Daughter, mother. Everything. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we pray. Lord, we pray. Okay. Heavenly Father, we pray for some God. You. 
be that mother, that virtuous mother, O oh God, to her children, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, she sacrificed much, O oh God. Already, O oh God. We pray for your anointing, O oh God, that will honor her, O oh God. And teach her that mother would stand as a new kid, O oh God. And other mothers can show her too. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. After that, Brother Terrence, Prophet Terrence, Minister Terrence, Gary Terrence, we have all different types of ministry that God's hand is upon you. Now, God told me to tell you, you've been patient over a few things. Yes, you have. You didn't want to be seen. You didn't want the forefront or nothing like that. But God told me to tell you because of your humbleness and focus, your faithfulness. God is going to have you working side by side with me. As we want to come together in a prophetic realm. We want to teach this prophetic realm. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's going to come here at the Friday of Christ, international. God wants you to get yourself ready because you're coming out to the forefront. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Oh, this you go. Sister Mark, could you raise your hand? Y'all see this tomorrow? Praise God. I didn't call on you because I wanted to see things worked out, first of all. Okay? I still haven't talked to different individuals as of yet. But God says, since you did come back and you are willing and ready to do the work of the Lord songs that now even your body will not be in pain no more. You won't suffer the pain in your bones and your mouth and the symptoms that you're going through. Heavenly Father, move upon Sister Margaret right now. Let your anointing of healing Move and saturate all the way through her entire body, Lord oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, make her all the way over, God. Change her inside out, God. By the blood and by the word of my testimony, in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We pray right now for the spirit of unity to be birthed down the side of her right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, and as you say, the anointing of the spirit of God. We're speaking to Paul. It's going to be angelic. So let's be ready to receive her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, here you go. I see you. Young man, both of y'all, one by one. Young man, yes. Could you raise your hand? Young man, yes. And your, this is your, yes, yes, you sir, you sir, yes. Y'all related, correct? Y'all related? Okay. Now, young man, God is concerned with your education. Okay. Who's in tech school or getting ready to go to tech school or thought about tech school? Raise your hand. Which one? Tech school. Okay, did you start? You didn't? Okay. God told me to go forward, young man. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. But you have to take that step in order for God to bless you. If you don't take that step, God can't bless you and raise you where he wants you to go, where he wants you to be. You're very obedient. That correct? I'm going to say it at times, okay? 
but most of the time you're obedient also, right? Okay, you're a gentleman and, and, and continue, you know, be obedient. Young man, um, first of all, what, what was your, what's your name? No, what, what's your name? Cortez. Cortez, okay, ready? Heavenly Father, move through Cortez's heart right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Mr. Mokai. Compel him to go forward in his education, oh God. Lord, you ain't able to make that move. Encourage him spiritually inside of his heart, spirit, soul, body, and mind. That he will take that step. And God is going to blow your mind. Yes, he is. You're going to have good grades and pass like blind colors. Because God is going to do it so. Young man, what's that? So we pray, Lord God, that you anoint him right now. So you go through college and pass college and go farther than that, Lord God. And through your tents, Lord God, on the soul. Give him that career job, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray the blessings of the Lord upon you all night. And Lord, watch it. Call him. But that holy presence, Lord God, may not go to the left or to the right, but stay focused and go straight ahead. Don't let your friends be toward you. On God's direction, that it happened where you were alive. But receive everything that God has for you. And you want to watch this and just crack up and say, Lord, how do you put me in a place like this? Because He loves you. That's the reason. Praise God. Thank you. Now, man, what is your name? Carrie. Huh? Carrie. 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 Okay. You was next. I was watching. Lord said, I need you. I need you to pray for you too. Okay. What grade you in? I'm what? Huh? I'm an adult. Right. You, you're not going to school. Yes, 
yourself for a long time. And you've been going down the easy road. You messed up if you took for easy. But God said, I want you to go all the way out there. I want you to take, take that course that you want, that you think that you're not qualified to get. And God said, He's going to open up doors for you. And He's going to give you the ability to do it. Amen. Because I know, you know, especially, you know, because today, Today, it's, going to, it's, it's an anointing of God, like I was talking about David. David, within himself, didn't have the ability, but when, after he was anointed by Samuel, then the ability came. Now, everybody that, you know, we're going to give it back to him, but everybody that uh, Pastor Barry called out today, we want to anoint you. Matter of fact, I want all the elders to, you know, after we get done, I want all the elders to anoint them. But I want Pastor uh, Larry to continue on. Before Pastor Larry comes, I hear in my spirit that there is a need for the whole church to repent. The day of repentance is now. Whatever has been done, we're not operating on what happened in years past, but we're happening on what God's doing in the future. God wants to bless us and he wants to take us to another level. But in order to be taken and elevated to that next level, there's repentance that needs to be done. I want the whole church to stay. And forgiveness. There's some things that we have. We harm one another. And I hear the Lord saying, we got to repent now. Because if we don't, there is no elevation. I want you to get your heart and your mind right. Because God said he's going to elevate here. I said he's going to elevate here. I said he's going to elevate here. I said he's going to elevate here. We do not want our pastor to come back and have to act like Superman and not another day. That's right. yeah. I said we don't. Yeah. I said, I'm the youngest, but I said, I'm like David. I said we don't want him to come back acting like Superman. We're going to operate under our callings. We're going to operate in our gifts. We're not going to be scared to step out when Pastor lays the mantle on us. We're going to do it. We're going to be obedient. I said we're going to be obedient. I said we're going to, I said we make the devil out of the lot. We're going to be obedient. And we're going to join together as one. We're going to quit getting into our separate groups. I hear the Lord saying, whoever it is is talking on the phone about it, the church stop talking on the phone about it. Let it alone. This is a house. And this is a house of worship. This is a house of prayer. This church is no different from other churches. Because I hear the Lord saying that we try to tell, uh, you know, compare churches. But you got in some church and you have good things and you have bad things. That needs deliverance. I said that needs deliverance. God said, it's time for us to hold one another up and pray. Because when our brothers and sisters are weak, them that are strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. God said, you have people that have left this church because there was nobody to talk to. That's right, that's right. Everybody that came in contact with ran them straight out the door. That's right. You may not even say nothing offensive to them, but because you didn't say anything at all, you sent them out the door. That's right. And God says it's time for repentance. Yes. It's time for us to hold our pastor. I know all of us have, we don't agree with a lot of things. Guess what? It happened from the pulpit all the way to the back door. But God said the time is now for us to lift him up. Because there are demons that have been strategically placed to try to kill our leader. I said there has been demons here that have been strategically placed that's tried to kill our leader. And that's why he had to go out of town. He didn't have to go out of this. He went out of town so that God could build him back up. But what did I tell you this morning? The anointing that God gave him in Florida, it ain't going to die back here in Tavishan. God said there's a matter of holiness that's supposed to be held up in this church. The Bible said holiness becomes thy house said the world. This may be a deliverance church.
church, but we don't got to act like we ain't been delivered. The Bible said that when you've been delivered, you're supposed to get somebody else to bring them in. You don't go back and get your throw up like dogs do. You don't go back and get bothered. It tastes nasty anyway. I hope don't nobody eat their own throw up. But that's what it's saying. It's like when you talk up a demon, leave the demon down in the toilet and flush it. Let it go to the river and go down to the swine. Don't go back and try to get what you got delivered from. I know I'm talking in here today. God says that this church is a holiness church. And the pastors, we're in the elders, we're here to hold our pastor up. We hear we preach holiness and we preach it in its entirety. And yes, I can say it. The baby of the preachers. This is holiness church. The battle is over. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, it's all right, you're going to do what you want to do. No! Sin brings repercussion. We ought to get scared that when we sin, some of us ought to make our skin itch when we think that we want to sin. There's an anointing that is over this church. And our pastor has passed a mandate that we rise to the occasion. And the time is now. We fought against each other. We are said let it go and walk therein. He said I've given you an open door that no man can shut. But I can't let you walk in in unclean hands. I want you to wipe your hands like you want you. God said you're ridding all of the junk that you held on to in this church. All of the foolishness you're ridding yourself of. Read it now. Read it because you don't want it. You don't want it because when God delivers there's, a, there's an anointing that when God trains us, he's going to train us for the good. I want somebody to say holiness. holiness. Say holiness. holiness. That's the kind of language we speak. The Bible says be holy at all times in all manner of your conversation. That means that when we leave this church, our conversation is going to be pure. The reason why is because God is calling. The time is inevitable. Some of you have been here for a long time. Well, I've been here for a long time. I got seniority. God says seniority don't mean nothing to me. Hell is only a, but a few seconds away. And I can put you in there just as quick as you blink your eye if you don't get it together. He says it to me. Do you know how I have to really examine myself? Yeah. I don't want to go to hell. That's right. I said, I don't want to go to hell. Now I want every hand lifted and every head bowed. And I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent as a church for not standing to the commitment that you have ordained for us. God, we repent right now for every sin and every wrongdoing. God, we repent for not holding the arms of our leader up like we were supposed to. Father, in the name of Jesus, we God, we ask in you to bind us closer together as one body, one mind, and one spirit in the name of Jesus. God, we get rid of anything that does not exalt your name. And Father, we commit ourselves unto your will. We thank you for doing it now. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise.
The Lord showed me the intercessory prayer members. They are on one accord. They hold the pastor's arms up. All the pastor's arms up. All the elders' arms up. All the deacons. Security. All the original. The choir. Praise team. Musicians. And everybody in the church and family members also, they stand in the gap, make up the hedge. When I mean warfare, warfare is going in on here at the Body of Christ International. The Lord was saying, they did everything within them in prayer. Let's give them a hand. They give all. And Satan has came against them. Terrence, what happened to you? Yes, Lord. I just have to say this before I give the testimony. Pastor Michael, Mathis, everything you said is what the Lord has put on my heart today. And everything that you said, even in the place of revival, revival is here today. And God it has called this church to holiness. Amen. On Monday, and, and, and uh, Pastor Michael, and all the pastors here, I honor you today. Amen. Everybody touched on the place of the gifts. But you really don't understand the cause of the call, the gift, or the anointing. And so the Lord been dealing with me. Uh, Monday I was in a horrific car accident and uh, the Lord been dealing with me up until the time of the accident. He said we ain't got no time. We ain't got no time to sit on our assignment. We ain't got no time to, to really wait and say we're not going to do what we have to do for the Lord. Because the Lord has really put a mantle and a mandate on all our lives. You may not be a prophet, you may not be an evangelist, but if you are a saint of God, God said it's no time to wait. And so today, when the altar begins to open up, you need to come up here and get yourself together. According to his word, it says, shall I continue in that sin that grace is about it? He said, certainly not. And so what happened to me on Monday, just to confirm the word of the Lord, I was in a horrific car accident. The Lord said, we ain't got no time. I was on 96, make the long story short, a car came and rear-ended me. The car hit me four times. The car was then almost flipped over. I thank the Lord I came up with no bruise, and then I came up with nothing. And then I had a little bit of business, but the Lord confirmed what he was saying. He said, we ain't got no time. Just in that instant, just in that moment, I could have went out into glory. And so if you got on forgiveness, Amen. Like Pastor was saying, if you got anything on today, give it unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Be careful when you got the attack of the enemy. It's beyond measurements. But they are standing in the gap, picking up the hedge. Myra, when the Lord showed me you was you reach the third heaven. The third heaven. All the other saints also. The Lord said, I need you to look at Myra. Watch her. Your whole upbringing is nothing but holiness church. Is that correct though? Okay. You live it every single day but the attack of the enemy has been attacking you and you haven't said nothing to nobody did you okay 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 now this is what god has said to me for everyone all the prayer session everybody saying we have god said i need to strengthen them back again the energy has been depleted from time and time out. But stand the gap for all of us. Every day. 
Heavenly Father, we pray right now, first of all, that you would strengthen the prayer warriors, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, Lord Covenant, with the Holy Spirit of God, as your anointing has covered them right now from the top of their heads and the soles of their feet, Lord God, that they will operate now and the higher anointing of God that restored every prince and father and powers and rulers and darkness and shroud and any one of us in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord oh God. We ask you right now, Lord oh God, to cancel the enemy inside of your life right now. And that no weapon that is moving is a triple power. We pay the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, and Lord, we pray that you have strengthened them right now. They now in a different higher anointing of God operating within them. And we pray that the finest blessings will come upon them right now as you are going to financial help of Lord God. In fact, we express it, Lord God. We give it to you, Lord God. You despite all of the God, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. And this too shall pass. And they shall stand. For they stand for God Almighty. Lord, reach down and give them a higher purpose in you, Lord God. And take them where you want them to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless you in the Holy Ghost of the Lord, and build your body to the ground to the Lord of love. In Jesus' name, we thank the Lord. Thank you, Power of the Testament. Join Pastor Kenneth Tate every morning at 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer and fellowship on WMUZ 103.5 in Detroit or on www.livestream.com backslash Lifeline Prayer Line TV for the Lifeline radio program. Also, make sure that you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and get all of Pastor Tate's inspirational words. Thank you for watching Lifeline. 